Good morning, and welcome to St. John's Presbyterian Church here in Toronto on Sunday, April 3rd, 2022. It's my grandmother's birthday if she were still with us. She's be way over 110. <laughs> I'm thrilled to have everybody here with us this morning. It is so nice to see every Sunday now faces that we haven't seen for a while. It's very, very nice. As you know, we're still wearing masks in church, but we are singing uh, behind our masks if we wish. And also, if you wish, uh, we'll, uh, you can read the psalm responsively with me when we get there. Uh, I'm going to read the uh, acknowledgement of traditional territory. We acknowledge that St. John's Presbyterian Church, part of the Presbytery of East Toronto, worships and meets on the traditional territory of the Huron-Wendat, Seneca, and most recently the Mississaugas of the Credit River. We understand that this land was very important for Indigenous people who lived on it before us, that this land is still important for Indigenous people today, and that Indigenous ways of living with each other and their ways of relating to the Creator have always been connected to this land and its people and all its creatures. And for anybody who might be watching online later and doesn't know me, I'm the Reverend Maureen Walter, the minister here at St. John's, and we're very delighted to have with us this morning playing uh, our music director, Mrs. Grace Hahn, and singing, leading us in singing, uh, Mrs. Yuki Zhang, thank you so much. <clears throat> we'll begin with our call to worship. O oh God, you are my God, I seek you. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary. May our lips praise you, O God. We're going to have our first hymn, number 190. Are we doing uh, the first and last verses? Yes. yes, the first and last verses of hymn one, 190. Let us join together in prayer. Let us pray. O Lord our God, help us sing always of your loving deeds. Throughout every generation may we proclaim your faithfulness. O Lord of life and glory, 
Help us to fulfill our ministry with faithfulness and joy and celebrate the mystery of your power and the triumphs of your grace. We give thanks that you send your light and your truth to guide us. And we ask that you would let them lead us to your holy places, to where you dwell, and that we should find you always dwell within us, as well as all around us. And that because of your great love, we may worship you together. We know, O Lord of grace and truth, that without you, we cannot do anything as we need to do. And so we pray that you would clothe us with your spirit, that you would fill us with your joy and your reverence, that we might worship together as your body of Christ and learn how to love one another through your great love who first loved and forgave us so that we might worthily proclaim your gospel to your glory throughout this world. In the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. And be assured that in the power and faithfulness and mercy of God, we are a forgiven people, that this day is a new day and a fresh start for each one of us. Amen. We're going to read Psalm number 126, 126 responsively. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negeb. Dr. Elizabeth Spears, our clerk of session, is going to read our Old Testament lesson for us. The lesson this morning is from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 16 to 21. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and the reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and the streams in the wasteland. The animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water on the desert and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I form for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. And Julie Gangadine, one of our session members, will read our gospel lesson. Good morning. Morning. 
Today's Gospel is from John chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus has raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray Jesus, objected. Why was this perfume sold and the money not given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to uh, sing hymn 204, uh, which verses again? First and last again, 204. And I think uh, we've got a couple of kids going out to Sunday school. They might come up and chat with me at the end of the hymn, and then they'll go out. Maybe you can come and sit here and then I'll still sort of be on camera. You can wave as you go past. <laughs> do, you, 
do you in uh, Sunday school do you ever talk about the seasons of the of the church year do you know what season we're in right now this is called Lent you probably knew that for sure <laughs> And Lent is a time when we prepare ourselves to receive the gift of Easter. And we particularly review some of the things in the Christ story that talk about suffering and why we needed Christ to come and be with us. And also what we can do in our own lives to uh, try to be more loving and Christ-like in our own lives. So if you guys got any thoughts about what you might like to do, Lent is something where we always think about, what do I want to do to make my life just a little bit more like Christ and a little bit more loving and kind? Uh, we used to talk about giving up things, usually because we've been in an affluent society, we give up things, but uh, it's not so much about giving up things, I don't think, but about trying to show love to people. Any ideas, any thoughts in your own minds about what you want to do? And I'm putting you on the spot so you don't have to answer if you don't want. <laughs> you can talk about it in Sunday school and we can all think about what's one thing we could do that would be a little more loving. Let's have a prayer. God, our Father, Thank you for being with us. Thank you for showing us how to love. Help us to love one another. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. Thank you so much. Next week, you guys are going to take part in the service. It's going to be Palm Sunday. I think you're going to stand up here and wave the palms around with me. That would be fabulous. Thank you. Yeah, we're... It really is nice to be moving a little bit more towards feeling like we can do community things again. It's very nice. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. Amen. In the final days of his teaching ministry, Jesus arrives at Bethany. There he visits the home of his longtime friends, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Jesus is now just a few miles from Jerusalem, where he plans to go to celebrate Passover. We, who've read the Gospels many times, no, it will be the last week of his life. But the friends do not act as if they are fearful. Instead, they put on a dinner, a large party. Everyone participates. Lazarus, who has recently been raised from the dead by Jesus, sits at table with him, eating and drinking. Martha serves the meal. Mary has acquired a pound of a costly and fragrant perfume made of pure nard. Nard is a fragrant ointment made from the roots and stems of an aromatic herb from India. It's a luxury purchase. Mary brings out the entire pound of perfume and uses it to anoint Jesus' feet. She dries Jesus' feet with her hair. The entire house is filled with the scent of the glorious perfume. It's hard to imagine a more personal or a more extravagant display of her devotion to Jesus. 
Before anyone says anything, Judas Iscariot speaks up in protest. Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor, he asks. That amount, 300 denarii, that, Jesus, uh, that Judas mentions is significant. A denarii was a day's wage for the common working man. 300 denarii was a year's wages for the average person. Judas questions the extravagance of Mary's gesture. Judas becomes enraged. Money which could have done so much good was wasted by being poured over Jesus' feet. The Gospel writer tells us that Judas's real concern was that he would not have access to the money Mary spent on the perfume. Had it gone into their common purse, he might have been able to steal it. We do not entirely know Judas's motivation for his anger. We do know that he was angry enough that soon afterwards he betrays Judas, he betrays Jesus to the religious authorities, bringing about Jesus' execution. For the purposes of today's story, we are to understand that Jesus welcomes and enjoys Mary's beautiful gesture of devotion. He does not share Judas's anger in any way. In fact, he defends Mary vigorously. Leave her alone, he tells Judas. She bought the ointment to have for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. For the brother and sisters, Lazarus, Martha, and Mary, this party was clearly their farewell to Jesus. They knew and understood Jesus would not live through the next week in Jerusalem. They gathered to say goodbye to him while he was still with them. Mary's wildly extravagant gesture speaks louder than any words to express her sorrow over the loss of their teacher and friend. Judas feels no such sorrow. He sees the mission to the poor. Possibly he sees an opportunity to enrich himself. He does not value the presence and life of Jesus. It is Judas who leads Roman soldiers to the garden where he is praying with the other disciples and points him out as the man they are searching for. Judas becomes an instrument of death. Somehow, in his devotion to ministry, Judas lost sight of God's presence. He lost his soul. By participating in the arrest of Jesus, he became a murderer. While the other disciples went on to proclaim the gospel and change the world, Judas vanishes from history. Legend has it that after using his reward money to buy himself a piece of land, he either hung himself or died of a horrendous disease. The disciples' first order of business when they regroup after the crucifixion is to elect a new disciple to take his place. After that, they never consider Judas again. In contrast, 
There are numerous traditions which tell us Mary became an important teacher in the early church, respected by most of the community. Traditional dismissal of her as a fallen woman seems to be a smear of her reputation which occurred some centuries later, done at a time when church leadership was eliminating the participation of women in ministry. For our purposes today, we look at the contrasting examples of Judas and Mary. In times of crises, we have choices about our actions. In truth, we choose our actions every single day. Every morning we wake up with a day ahead of us. Some days we feel beset by problems and can feel nothing but fear and anxiety. Other mornings, we wake up and decide to enjoy the day. Mary chose to make a gesture of love while she still had Jesus with her. We can choose to get up and listen for the birds to sing or to catch a glimpse of sunlight through the crowds, even on a gray and dim day. A Canadian champion of justice for women, Nellie McClung, was an early advocate for getting the vote for women. She wrote a few books whose aim was to show the justice of giving women the vote. But they're also well written and funny in some of the, my most uh, favorite books that I read as a young person. In one of those books, she wrote an exercise on true greatness, supposedly written as a school exercise by one of the characters in the novel. True greatness, she suggested, was like being on the farm after the manure had been spread, and yet, somehow, still managing to smell the flowers blossoming through the nasty odor. True greatness is knowing the end is near, and yet trusting in God enough to celebrate the life we have today. It's not easy. Mary was prepared to put a whole year's wages into her gesture of love. Rosa Parks put her person on the line when she refused to move to the back of the bus. Martin Luther King kept preaching his dream despite the danger. In all these cases, people followed their hearts despite the cost. Their actions came from love. Judas missed the heart of the matter. He thought of being right he had no interest in wild gestures of love. He failed to value love at all. Providing for the poor was about doing the right thing. Jesus fed people when they were hungry, but he did not expect to take over feeding them night and day. Rather, he pointed them towards God and fulfilling the missions God called them towards. We are asked to put our hearts into the way we live our lives. Do you remember a school teacher? Likely the ones you recall with fondness were those who loved what they were doing. The best teachers make a difference in people's lives not because they teach the alphabet, but because they instill in their students a love of learning and a sense of self-worth. Mary loved Jesus with all her heart, and so her gesture could not be wrong. In the midst of controversy over the recent violence at the Oscars, was a shining example of love. 
Last year's Best Supporting Actress winner, a woman from Korea, was giving an award. And she learned sign language. In case the nominee who uses sign language to communicate should happen to win. When she saw his name, she paused to sign it before announcing it out loud. She signed her congratulations to him. And then she held his Oscar award so that he could use his hands to sign his acceptance speech. Those actions shone with the truth of love. There was nothing self-righteous about her behavior. No one would have thought she had to do that. She made choices based on love and thus she sang love to all of us. Follow your heart. Follow God's love. Let love abound. Amen. We're going to have an anthem.
Thank you so much. Well, as I've said already about three or four times, it's lovely to see some people here. And we're very pleased that we are able to uh, worship together in person as well as online. Thank you for everyone who is with us. Uh, this afternoon at 4.30 at St. James Anglican Cathedral, we are holding a special ecumenical prayer vigil for peace and unity for the Ukraine. Um, this is a service planned by the worship committee of the Canadian Council of Churches in the GTA. And uh, everybody is welcome to attend in person. It will also be live streamed on YouTube. And in your email, you will see that we've sent you the link to the live stream if you want to watch it online. Uh, they are asking that we mask during the service and stay uh, socially distanced. Uh, but otherwise, those are the only restrictions. And of course, nobody has gone back to refreshments yet. So it's a simple in and out. Uh, I will be participating in that service on behalf of uh, local Presbyterians. And um, I uh, would be delighted to see any of you there uh, as well. Uh, also coming up this week, we are planning on uh, Wednesday morning to have a social hour, a coffee break hour at uh, 11 a.m. And then on Thursday afternoon at 2, we c these are online, everything still. And then at uh, 2, a Bible study. Uh, and the links to those have gone out with the email as well. Next Sunday, the 10th of April, is Palm Sunday. And we are celebrating communion. We have uh, gotten for the occasion um, little disposable communion individual prepackaged cups so they're very safe so you'll be picking some up uh, at the back we won't be sort of handing them out the way we usually do um, I'll demonstrate next week because my colleagues who use it tell me it's you have to open them carefully so you don't wind up with grape juice on you. <laughs> but anyway, we this will be the first time that we've celebrated communion uh, uh, for a long time. We I think we had communion once during uh, COVID, so we're very much looking forward to that. And we hope everybody will be able to join us either here in person or uh, if you're going to join us online next week, have your communion elements, whatever you want to use with you at home. Then we are planning to have an in-person Good Friday service here, uh, Friday, April 15th at 11 a.m. Um, and that, I suspect we will also uh, do that live stream as well and on Zoom and recorded. And then Easter Sunday, April 17th. So uh, a busy couple of weeks coming up. Uh, if you read through your... Uh, Emails, when you get them, you'll see there are a few more uh, organizational type announcements uh, um, about uh, offering and the ability to support uh, Ukrainian relief through Presbyterian World Service and Development. If when you send in your offerings or leave them in the offering plate, uh, if you mark on the envelope what portion you want to go to Ukrainian relief, that will be submitted through Presbyterian World Services and Development. And also, my understanding is that the offering collected this afternoon at the prayer vigil will go through the Anglican sister organization of Presbyterian World Service and Relief, the Primates uh, World Service and Relief Fund, and will also be going for Ukrainian uh, relief. Um, and we do expect there to be a fair bit of participation in that service. So we, it's our ecumenical uh, working together as Christian churches that we are doing our best to respond with love to this um, aggression in other parts of the world. Those are all of the announcements that I have at this time. Let us continue our service in prayer, including we will give thanks for our blessings and our offerings. Let us pray.
Mighty and merciful God, may your kindness be known to all. We thank you for the many gifts which you have given to us, but especially we thank you for the gift of fellowship of one another. We thank you for this body of Christ in all its glories and in all its imperfections, that we may learn to live together in love and that we may have the opportunity to share your resources, that they might be gathered, distributed, and, and used with unselfish motives for the greatest benefit of all. We thank you, O oh Lord, for all the material gifts we have been given, as well as the fellowship, for whatever blessings we may have, and we pray for any who suffer from lack or from want, from poverty and oppression. Help us to be your loving hands and hearts and help us to work for the easement of poverty from our hearts. Help us to share your love with all those who need us. Hear the prayers of all who call to you, O Lord. Open the eyes of those who never pray for themselves. Have mercy on those who are in misery. And deal gently with those who sit in darkness, those who live with anxiety and fear, and especially those who live with aggression, violence, oppression, and prejudice. We pray for all of those who struggle from substance abuse, who work to overcome it. And we ask that each one of us might find in our hearts those things which we also need to overcome, to fill our emptiness with your love and to share that love wherever it is needed. We ask that you would be gracious to all those people who are in need and that we might together work to celebrate your creation, to bring healing to this earth and to its peoples, that children might grow up strong in body and sound in mind and fulfilled in spirit, and that way we might each find our way to you that we might know peace and freedom and truth, and that all people everywhere might learn to live in love through knowing our beloved Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose great name we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We'll conclude our service with hymn number 461, Be Thou My Vision, and uh, probably first and last.
You are the mustard seed, God's sign of hope and love planted in the world that you might grow into a mighty plant under which all the world can take comfort. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of you now and forevermore. Amen.